Good morning, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It is Monday morning. I just wrapped up the last episode. I have to edit that today, but presumably if you're watching this, it's already out. So I'll post that up here. It is Monday. It is Hell Monday. Um, funny enough, this is going to be our only Hell Day of the week because it used to only be once a week. But for the last couple of months, we've had three hell days a week, sometimes two, because our Mondays alternate. But yeah, Tuesday and Friday, which are our other hell days, we're actually not going to be hell days at all, because our therapist is still out for her wedding, which is very, very cool for her, and also very, very nice for us, because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Today's hell day is a little bit extra, because... Our schedule's not even like our regular schedule. Battery died, obviously, and now kiddo is literally like touching me. He's so close. So if you hear his iPad in the background, I'm sorry, it's going to be loud. And we're we're kicking and moving the table now, of course. Um, I was saying, I think, before the battery cut me off, that this Monday in particular is a little extra helly because one of the things I have to do today is I have a meeting with our behavior ter therapy team and they've actually moved the time of the meeting around. So now I have less space, less time between the end of that meeting and the beginning of our first therapy. So um, I still have the same amount of time in the day, but it's just structured differently and that kind of affects things. Yeah. So I'll make it happen. But now, Kittle's blasting his iPad. <sighs> the oven is beeping because his food's ready. I gotta go. So I'll pop back in in a little bit, hopefully and like update you guys on what's up for the week. But for right now, happy Monday. Hello friends, it's Tuesday morning. It should be hell day, but it's not, which I'm happy about. I've had a super productive morning. Everybody slept last night. Kiddo was in bed by 10.30. I was in bed by 11. I got at least eight hours of sleep. Kiddo got like 12 hours of sleep. Ironically, yesterday he only slept three hours, less than three hours as a matter of fact, and he was in a fantastic mood all day. Today, he slept far more than that. And we woke up a little bit cranky. We're not like mad or anything, but we're definitely, oh, we're covering the, that's great. Thank you. Mama's still talking to the camera, bud. That's the sort of day we're having. So it is Tuesday. We have two therapies, one of which is in person. Mm -hmm. The house is fine, which is great. That's mm -hmm. a huge load off because I don't have that much to do to prepare today. Um, I'm just doing a ton of laundry, washing, drying, folding, putting away, etc. cetera. Um, I just, well, yesterday I cleaned out all of the lizard enclosures because they all needed it at the same time somehow. And then Pepper went and surprised me this morning by wrecking her enclosure again. So I've been working on that as the time has permitted me this morning. Hi. And um, now we're going to get dressed. No, we're not. We're gonna get dressed because we have therapy soon. And for the rest of the day, I know I have some stuff on my list. I have to make a DMV appointment because apparently this year my license is expiring. So I have to actually go to the DMV and like pass the vision test again, get a new picture taken, etc. Um, cause typically when it renews, I just renew it online, but every X amount of years you have to actually go in person and do it. So I have to try to get an appointment today. I have until October, but it notoriously takes a really long time to get appointments here. And you do not want to go to a DMV in South Florida without an appointment. You just don't. But, okay, I might have to talk to you guys later because this is not working out. I want to update you guys on the show we started yesterday, mm -hmm. but yeah, kiddo does not want me to do that now. So, um... Happy Tuesday. <laughs> okay, it's a little later in the afternoon and the house is pretty much ready for in-person therapy. So let me try to jump back on here and talk to you guys a little bit more since kiddo wasn't having it this morning. It's funny, he slept so well last night, but woke up in kind of a shaky mood. He's better now, he's hanging out, he's chilling. But yesterday when he was exhausted, he was in such a great mood all day. So it's like, I don't know if I like that trade-off, man. Like, obviously I would love to have you just happy and you need to go bubbly all day, but at the cost of you only sleeping two and three quarter hours, like, anyway. Last night, we started the Decameron on Netflix. It's, I forget if it's eight or 10 episodes, but they're hour long episodes. 
and it's a British like kind of absurd sex comedy if you will it's sort of in the vein of sex education and actually one of the actresses from sex education one of our favorite ones is on this show as well in a prominent role and there goes my phone being annoying um but I feel like sex education had a lot of like heartwarming moments as well that grounded it some this is not that this is almost trying to be Monty Python Mel Brooks and it's not quite landing so the characters are fun the story is fun obviously some characters I'm enjoying more than others as you know as I would with any other program but the thing about the show is that we are now three episodes in and only just now am I starting to feel gripped by the story. Only just now am I starting to be like, oh, I wonder what happens next. I care what <laughs> happens next. Because the first, the first episode, I was very interested because they're like setting the scene for who everybody is and what's going on and how they all relate to each other, etc. But then the two episodes that follow where you'd think like, okay, we got the basics out of the way. Let's really dive into the situation here. It's almost building so slowly and a little bit repetitively that I would walk away for 10 minutes, load the dishwasher, come back and sit back down. And I was entertained the whole time, but I wasn't like, oh, oh pause it, pause it. I have to go pee and I don't want to miss anything. Like it wasn't like that. I'm hoping that now that we're further into it and the, the stuff is starting to like get juicy now and pick up that hopefully I'll be a little more riveted by what's going on. But it's not bad at all. I'm enjoying it. I'm entertained. It's just not gripping me the way that I want it to. So if anything changes regarding that, I'll let you guys know. As far as my solo show, I am on episode five, I think of season 39 of the challenge tomorrow season 40 begins <laughs> and i don't know if i'm gonna wait to finish 39 before jumping into 40. i probably should do that a so i don't get myself confused and b so that i give some opportunity to 40 to like build on some episodes and maybe i can watch two or three at a time instead of having to just watch one and then wait for the next one but my parents um when the pandemic first started, one of the first things we did, because for a good year, we didn't do anything outside the house, right? And so, a good year and a half, probably. So binging TV shows was like the primary form of entertainment. And at the time, Amazon had a bunch of seasons of the challenge, like including older ones, for free, for streaming um, online. So... I started watching it and I think, you know, maybe when I was like three or four seasons in, my dad kind of sat down with me and he was like, oh, what's this? This is interesting. And I filled him in on not just what the show is about, but like, oh, and it's extra crazy because this guy dated this girl and she thinks they're still together, but he's actually already, you know, messing around with this one. And these two guys are in a feud that's gone back like three or four seasons. And this in this season, one of them actually like decks the other one and he gets kicked out. Like it's a whole thing. So I kind of brought him into the lore aspect of it. And my dad has become a super fan. My mom likes the show. My mom likes it a lot, but my dad treats it like a novela, like my dad is obsessed. So my only concern with not jumping right in and watching the premiere tomorrow of season 40 is that my dad might spoil it for me. <laughs> and if you saw the last episode, I'll post that up here in case I haven't yet, and if I have, then you already saw it. Um, my dad loves a spoiler <laughs> because if he's hype about something he wants you to be hype about it too and if that means telling you in detail what happened or what all it entails he'll do that not because he wants to spoil it for you but just because he wants you to match his level of excitement over what happened so um i might have to jump the gun and go ahead and watch season 40 tomorrow anyway today's been a good day so far it is Tuesday. We finished our first therapy. We didn't have a second therapy. And our third one is going to start actually pretty soon. So that's going to be that. Tonight we're probably going to continue to watch the Decameron. 
I still don't know what the hell a Decameron is, by the way. I should probably look that up. But they haven't mentioned it whatsoever. I'm going to look it up right now because how am I going to leave y'all hanging like that? They haven't mentioned the word Decameron whatsoever on the show. It's to do with like the plague, one of many plagues, I'm sure, but it's set specifically in Italy. And it's kind of like what happens when all of these people end up at the same place um, to try to escape the, the plague that's happening in their, in their towns. The word Decameron comes from, the, comes from Greek and means 10 days. Okay, I've never heard that before. It's the title of a collection of 100 novelas by Giovanni Boccaccio written between 1348 and 1353. The book is considered a classic of medieval plague literature, okay, so there's the tie-in, and is often cited by physicians and epidemiologists for its vivid depiction of the Black Death. Okay, oh, you know what? This is actually, it, it continues, the title refers to the 10 days that the book's characters spent at a villa outside Florence in 1348 during the Bubonic Plague. Okay, and then from there on out, that's where it deviates. Like, up until that moment, that pretty much sets the, t the stage for what the show's about. But then after that, it's like a complete... Because the rest of it has nothing to do with the show. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Now that I know that that's what it is, and that's kind of what it's based upon. So that's pretty cool. My phone is annoying me. Okay, so anyways, that's what we've been up to. That's what's going on. That's what I'm going to continue to be up to today because I'm going to just watch more of the show and like hang out and chill since the house is pretty much doing all right. And uh, yeah, I hope you've had a happy Tuesday. Good morning, friends. It's Wednesday. Actually, is it morning? I think it might be afternoon already. Um, I've had a very lazy day. As you guys might know, Wednesday is our day off typically. And as such... Wednesday is also typically the day that I try to do as much recording as I can fit in, as much editing as I can fit in, because today I have the time to do it, right? Without having to worry about making sure that I'm finished with this task by such a time, because then we have to get ready for therapy, etc. So it just kind of works out perfectly where there's nothing set on the schedule today, so I can take my time and just really focus on the things that I want to do. The thing is that today specifically, what I want to do is rest. I had a really bad night of sleep, um, just generally feeling kind of icky. I'm not sick or anything, but I'm just not feeling it, you know? And maybe it's noticeable in the vlogs lately as well too, but like, I've kind of, I'm, I'm losing a little bit of motivation for recording which feels silly because I've already done the hard part as far as like, I know exactly what I'm supposed to record. I have all of the videos planned out. I know when they're coming out. I have like, if I'm gonna make a recipe, I already have the recipes like set up and prepared. All that's left to do, I'm making it sound like it's not much, but all that's left to do is actually recording and then editing. So, those are the most time consuming parts, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm saying like, it's not like I have to start anything from scratch. Everything, everything that I'm recording for basically the rest of the year, basically, thank you, English, um, is, is pretty much planned. I just have to like do the thing. But I woke up today with the intention of recording two entire videos and editing one, and it looks like I might edit that video but I'm not going to be recording anything today. I just don't want to. I'm not feeling up to it today, and I don't want to phone it in. I don't want to half-ass it just for the sake of sticking to a schedule. If I put these videos out, I want them to be good videos. So if I'm not feeling it today, then that's just what it is, and I'm not gonna force it because I feel like you as the viewer are gonna watch it and feel that it was forced. And who does that benefit really? Nobody at the end of the day. So it just is what it is. I'm taking a little bit of a breather today. I've been watching a bunch of YouTube videos uh, because everybody is putting out now like their experiences of the first Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween parties of the year. So I've been watching those. Um, the Sister Wives 
season 19 trailer dropped yesterday surprising everybody so there's been a lot of like reactions and stuff to that i've been watching that i've been catching up on the fitness marshall vlogs because he has a vlog channel too not just like exercise videos and i'm still doing my exercise videos etc but i love vlogs and if i like you as a person i'm gonna watch pretty much every vlog content you've ever put out it's kind of something i do so i've been watching that I'm still watching season 39 of The Challenge, which actually season 40 drops today. So I've been having a bit of a couch potato day. Like I've been hanging out with my son. My son's been super cuddly and cozy today, which is great because that's the vibe I'm feeling too. So we've just been cuddly cozy together, watching TV, hanging out. Um, hubby is actually fishing today with my dad and my godfather. But I think they said they were going to make it like an early day because the fishing kind of sucked today and the weather's kind of crap too. Ooh, that's loud. So yeah, so I mean it sucks that, you know, it just didn't work out today, but it looks like they're going to be coming home soon. So there's that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been the day today. It's just been kind of a relaxed sort of chill day and that's just fine by me. So... I'm doing laundry now as well. I'm making us lunch, etc. And um, I don't know what the rest of the day will bring, but I guess I'll let you guys know when I come back and close out the video. So for now, happy Wednesday. Camera's probably gonna fog up, but let's try our best here. Um, you can see, wow, I actually hadn't even noticed this. An iguana obviously came through and riggedy wrecked. Actually, it might've killed this plant because it ate all of the leaves. So I don't think this plant is going to recover, unfortunately, which sucks because this is one of my most prolific plants. Like, this was one of my healthiest plants. But there's, like, not enough left of it, really, for it to bounce back. Point is, an iguana came in here, knocked everything off this shelf, everything off this shelf. There's just a mess of stuff all over my floor. And you might have seen in the last episode, I had this big old plant inside my house. My dad, well, my parents gave me this over the weekend. They've actually been giving it to me for, like, two months and I keep forgetting to grab it from their house. But it's basically a big old Cuban oregano bush and something about the smell, I think, of this, because it is a very strong smell. It's supposed to turn off iguanas. It's supposed to make them not want to come near it. I don't know how true that is because I had my husband finally bring this out here yesterday after all this happened. And the first thing that occurred is that tailless, you might remember tailless, our outdoor lizard that I introduced to you guys a few episodes ago. Tailless came from his little spot right here that he usually hangs out on, climbed all the way down and promptly tried to hop directly into the plant. He couldn't, he's too small. But the point is, is that, oh, here comes a plane. So let's talk over the plane now. The point is that if this was so stinky and repellent and just ugh, to lizards, why was Tailless so excited to become one with it? Obviously, Tailless is not an iguana. Maybe this is a iguana-specific plant. Like, they, they specifically don't like this. I don't know. But we're going to try our best. I'm going to pick up all this nonsense, water everybody while I'm out here, and hopefully this thing does what it's quote-unquote meant to do. And if nothing else, it'll be delicious in our frijoles negro. It's dark, everybody's in bed. I have just the TV lighting me, so the TV, the, the light's gonna be a little bit erratic, but um, it's Wednesday night, and we are two episodes away from finishing the Decameron. It's gotten really, really good. Like there's been, we watched two episodes tonight, and in those two episodes, there were at least two or three moments where we were like, like we actually were kind of, shocked at what was going on and in order to be shocked you have to give a crap right so obviously the show has evolved to the point where now we're like really interested in what the characters are doing which is good it was a very slow burn and if you're not into this kind of comedy it's going to be very very difficult to stay the course and wait for it to build up like this but I love British comedy and so it's been worth it for us we only have two episodes left so very likely we're gonna finish it tomorrow um but that was good 
my husband had a horrible day of fishing unfortunately they caught like one fish between the four of them that went out because my godfather took my aunt as well so they caught like one keeper between the four of them my husband broke his favorite rod because he got stuck on a rock and apparently like he shifted wrong to try to get it unstuck and the whole thing just snapped so um it was not a good day unfortunately and that really really sucks <sighs> and what else i mean i guess that's pretty much it that was kind of our wednesday it was it was a very chill day um hubby was asleep most of the time whenever we weren't watching the show he just kind of took a nap so a very very relaxed evening i suppose but yeah tomorrow's thursday tomorrow we should have our regular schedule i'm going to try to record those videos that i didn't record today but we'll see how i'm feeling tomorrow and um no plans as of yet for the weekend i'm kind of honestly wanting to go back into like 2020 lockdown mode right now because my dad works in an environment where there's a lot of people in very close quarters and he never masks my dad's very covid conscious but for some reason he's also one of these people that's like i'm vaccinated it'll be fine even though like the last time he was vaccinated was like a year and a half ago whenever the latest one dropped so um in effect at this point the vaccines aren't really doing anything for him and um as much as i ask him to like please not expose yourself to those environments he continues to do so and so i'm actually really really scared of going over and spending time at their house as long as he's continuing to because he doesn't need to do those jobs like these are jobs that he does like literally just so that he's not hanging out at home because he's bored at home um they're like a, it's a gig type situation but he keeps insisting on doing it even though i keep asking him to not and so i don't know Obviously, I would prefer to continue seeing him, but also I would prefer he not continue to expose himself and therefore us to these risks, especially during this surge, which is like the biggest surge that we've had since 2020. And the big difference between now and 2020 is the last time there was a surge like this, people were forced into lock... Well, our version of a lockdown, because in the United States of America, no matter what any of you think, we didn't actually ever go into a lockdown. All of you people that feel so oppressed about what happened by 20, in 2020, like, that was not a lockdown. Um, but the point is that the last time that the situation was this dire, we were sort of, like, compelled to take precautions. And this time around, people are way too selfish, way too proud to be told what to do. So it's just going to run rampant. And... Um, I'm not with that. I'm not trying to take that risk. We've already had, if you've been watching the vlogs in the last month or so, we've already had some close calls and um, even that has not been enough to rattle people into like tightening their situation, except me. So I don't know. I don't know where anybody stands with that, um, but that's that's what I'm feeling right now. So anyways, all that to say, I, I have no idea what's happening this weekend, but I guess you guys will find out along with me. So I hope you guys are staying safe. The fitness marshal even, actually, funny enough, um, canceled his class yesterday because he and his husband are positive for COVID. And Haley had COVID last week or the week prior. So um, she had COVID like two weeks ago because she had it long enough ago where I don't think it's possible that Haley gave it to Caleb. I think it's that there's just it's just so prominent now it's just one in 37 americans has covid right now there's a million new cases of covid in america every single day and i'm not even going to talk about the fact that there's a monkeypox pandemic or epidemic happening right now in the congo um there's all sorts of stuff going on on the planet that's absolutely horrifying that nobody wants to talk about because it's a lot more fun and exciting and safe to not but facts and so um yeah the point is is that you probably know somebody that has covid right now and I'm wondering if that's inspiring you at all to start masking again. It's never too late to restart um, or to take any other precautions because this is still a thing. I actually 
somebody commented on this is why I'm, I brought it up because somebody commented on the fitness marshals post yesterday when he announced like hey I have COVID I have to cancel a class oh how interesting that people are still testing for COVID and I replied well yeah there's a million new cases a day in America um, it's the largest surge since 2020 so yes the responsible thing is to continue to test and observe distancing when you're sick so that you don't continue to get other people sick Oh, what are you, some kind of sheep? What about flu? Have you ever masked for the flu? How come in 2020 there was no flu deaths, huh? You just believe anything, don't you? And I was tempted to just block the person. I did block the person eventually. Because I'm in my, I'm not gonna let idiots online rattle my inner peace era. But first I had to let them know, okay, you're just a willful idiot, obviously, because you completely lack critical thinking. The reason flu numbers were so low in 2020 is because we were all basically forced to mask and social distance. Numbers for a lot of things were down in 2020 because we were all taking precautions. Du like, how do you not put that together, you f idiot? But anyway, um, blocked and I think it's encouraging that the consensus seems to have been behind me and 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 you know agreeing with my comment and supporting my comment but the fact that people still think like this four years later with all the people that have died etc is just mind-blowing to me the selfishness of people at large but specifically Americans is just incredible but anyways, now I'm going off on a tangent and I'm trying not to get upset because of idiots on the internet, right? The problem is that it's hard to not get upset at idiots on the internet when these idiots on the internet are also actually idiots in real life and their thinking and their decisions impact actual people. But anyway, hope you guys are having a great week. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're taking precautions. And as always, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed any part of it and if you did i hope you'll please give it a thumbs up before you go i hope you'll subscribe and click the notification bell because i post at least three times a week typically and i wouldn't want you to miss a minute thanks so much again for watching bye